Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The title of today's lesson is, List Them Mine Enemies, The Enemies Without, Part 3. Once again, today's lesson is entitled, List Them Mine Enemies, The Enemies Without, Part 3. <clears throat> now, last time we covered 1 and 2. Pertaining to these individuals or these groups of people that call themselves Jews, that call themselves Israelis, they are not of the house of Israel. There are no Levites among them. However, they are claiming that they are the people of the Most High and the people of the Creator. What they have not done, they have not called themselves Israelites, and rightfully so. And as you would know that the house of Israel or Israelites, we are not Jews. The only time that the house of Israel referred to themselves as solely one tribe was those of us who were in the north who were referred to as Ephraim. And that would be those tribes that were separated at the split when Israel became two nations, north and south. And that is the only time that we were referred to by one tribe. And that was only those of the north who was referred to as Ephraim in general but a man of Israel never just called himself a Judite and that was it and he was from Issachar or something like that. that that's never that's never happened and that's not in our records anyway brace yourselves tighten up your jaws do not turn to the left or to the right or you will get hit in the mouth we are to walk the straight and narrow way of the most highest commandments all right let's begin uh, list them my enemies this is the part three now the people that call themselves Jews, who are known as Israelis, <clears throat> they have been kicked out over 100 nations. You are to go look that up. Of the many nations of which they have been accused of being disruptive and doing nefarious things and were ousted as a collective out of these nations. Now, the house of Israel, we were scattered to the four corners of the earth. And the Most High said he did this because we disobeyed his commandments. And we are and were to remain within these nations lost and confused he would take away our ability to understand he would put fatness on our hearts he would make us make us blind where we would not see and he would make us deaf to where we would not hear in other words we would be dummies in the midst of the nations now upon being scattered into these nations we will have no ease we will have no rest you've all read deuteronomy chapter 28 <clears throat> about the curses that was listed upon the chosen the people of the most high the israelites so as we were scattered into these lands, the Most High stated clearly that we would remain in these lands until he had poured out his spirit upon us and caused us to be brought to remembrance, which means we would have to go into this book of remembrance and read up on the documentary, all the documents that was has been left for us and by us, meaning our forefathers had written all these documents. The prophets, our prophets, the prophets of the Most High has left us the road map on exactly how we are to return out of these nations and get out of the mess that we're in. Now, when the Most High said he would scatter, scatter us into these many nations and that he himself will return and gather us, he never stated that we would be kicked out by the governments of nations. You cannot find any nation on this earth that has kicked out the children of the diaspora, it has never happened. I don't care. You can start from South America, Latin America, the Caribbean, North America, Europe, quote unquote Africa. You can go throughout the earth where our people have been displaced, enslaved, robbed, and spoiled. And none of these nations have ever casted us out of their nation. It has never happened. You cannot do something that the Most High does not allow. And at no time did the Most High ever state that when he scattered his people into the nations, that the nations would throw them out. So the fact that they have been kicked out of over 100 nations, that's one. It doesn't line up with the prophecy. The Most High states clearly that he was going to scatter us into these nation, nations and that he would sift and separate us from these people, 
pour out our, his spirit upon us, we will return back onto him. We will separate ourselves from the people, their ways and their customs. And upon us returning back onto his law, that then and only then will he return and gather us out of these many nations where he has scattered us. At no time does that prophecy state that he was going to scatter us to the four corners of the earth. And then all of a sudden, the, the nations that we were in were going to kick us out. It doesn't say that. All right. So that's something to consider as it pertains to them. All right. You know, all the rabbis of these Israelis, when they do their schooling, they are to go and they're to read and study from what's known as the Talmud. At no time were the children of Israel ever given a Talmud. It's not in the records. At no time has the sons of Aaron had to follow the instructions of a Talmud. Not here. Something to consider. Now, there's a fellow by the name of Theodor Herzl. He was born in Hungary, in Austria. And he was very uh, adamant about what, that no, what is known or commonly known today as a Zionist movement. The collection of Jewry or people who are of this quote unquote Jewish descent that has been scattered all throughout Europe. To get them on one accord where they actually have committees in these many nations and they actually converse one with another in order to try to create an organization powerful enough for them to start what they would call later on a Jewish state or a holy land. Now, he picked up on this idea from the Jews before him, but his writings was very popular among the Jews of the many different nations, which later on, kind of brought the whole Zionist movement into fruition as far as them establishing a Jewish state. Now, they had looked at Uganda, they have looked in South America, they have looked in other parts of Africa before they decided to settle in what is known as Palestine today. So they were looking for all options and other places by which to start this quote-unquote Zionist movement. Now, the, the land of Israel, this nation of Israel, that they speak of was created in 1948. Now, understand in 1948, this nation that they're calling Israel, it was a British mandate. You have the League of Nations, your modern day UN, in other words, Europeans who seized other people's lands and put some other Europeans in there. <clears throat> Let me say that again. The Europeans, namely the British, because <clears throat> they're all the same, <clears throat> the League of Nations, you can't find anyone that looks like me in the, on the League of Nations. <clears throat> you take those 13, <clears throat> and they literally went to Palestine after the Ottoman Empire has been disassembled. <clears throat> the Ottoman Empire is no good because it's crumbled, because Palestine used to be on the the authority of the Ottoman Empire. So now the Ottoman Empire is destroyed. The British has control of what's known as Palestine. And so now they figured with the League of Nations and their power, all the European nations backed the Zionist movement going to that land and inserting themselves in the midst of those people on the false pretense. It's a good way to put it. Now, the United States of America acknowledged Israel on the very same day that it is quote-unquote founded. Now, all of this takes place in what's known as the Belfort Declaration. It's the approval of the British government of a Jewish state and a Jewish homeland. In other words, you have a bunch of Europeans take some other Europeans into a land, funded it, <clears throat> provided them protection that they may exist in that land that is not theirs. That's what you have going on in Palestine today, which is the land of Israel, the former land of Canaan. This is the same thing you had in South Africa. You have Europeans 
that stole people's lands, invaded it, did all manner of evil and wicked things contrary to the Most High in order to keep that land. And you had Europeans, America and other nations, Israel included, backing the foul behavior of Germans, the foul behavior of the Dutch Afrikaners and the rest of them that's sitting in South Africa murdering and slaughtering people. Absolute wickedness that will not go unchecked by the Most High. <clears throat> Same thing in Australia. You have the Brits go to Australia, murdered and slaughtered the indigenous people of Australia, which you would commonly refer to as black people, stole their children, molested them, killed their children, took their children away, stripped them from their parents, taught them all manner of things that were destructive to them, destroyed their way of life. And the U.S. government backed this, and the British government backed this. These are nothing but Europeans that's actually in cahoots, in agreement with other Europeans in ways and customs that are foul that are wicked, that are contrary to the Most High's law. And the same playbook that they've put in Palestine is the same playbook that's in South Africa, is the same playbook in America, is the same playbook in Latin America and anywhere else on the earth. Same people, same playbook, same operating procedure. Now, the Most High made it plain that the children of Israel would have no might by which we can strike back at our enemies. So if we look at our condition today, look at those of us who are in South America. That looks like me. We're scattered in all the nations of South America. Let's look at the Caribbean, those that look like me that are scattered throughout that area. Let's look at Latin America that's scattered. The children of Israel scattered throughout Latin America. Let's look, let's look at those of us who are scattered within North America, Haiti, America, places like this. Let's look at some of us who are sitting in Africa. We have absolutely no might in our hand by which we can strike back at our enemies. That's what the prophecy states, that we will not have the might by which to retaliate against our enemies. It is clearly written out in Deuteronomy 28. So let's look and see if these Jews, these Israelis, fit any of what the Most High has said. Now we look uh, back in June 1967, we had what was known as a Six-Day War, where the Arab nations and these Israelis got to blows with some of this weaponry of war. The U.S. spy ship, the USS Liberty, was attacked by the Israelis and they try to blame it on other people <clears throat> in order to get the US government to come into the war on their side keep in mind this ship was attacked in international waters international waters a United States vessel was attacked by the Israeli government 34 were, were killed sailors and marines 171 were injured and the ship was heavily damaged now the israelis paid out 3.32 million to compensate 34 families now imagine that three let's call it 3.5 let's round it up three and a half million to compensate 34 dead u.s servicemen 3.57 million to the 171 that were wounded and 6 million for the damaged ship. All right, let's analyze this whole thing. Number one, the children of Israel, we would have absolutely no allies in the nations. That's number one. We would have no might by which to strike back at our enemies. We would be the tail and not the head. <clears throat> Other people would lend to us but we could not lend to them because we will not have that financial might. So, here it is, these Israelis, they actually got submarines <clears throat> that they can actually launch missiles 
at other people's boats. And then when they do this, they could just break the law. They could do this in international waters. Kill U.S. servicemen. And then they have the financial might, the financial means to pay off those that they have murdered. This is not the prophecy. That is why when you look at the children of Israel scattered throughout the diaspora, we don't make weapons of war. We do not have bullet factories, tank factories. We do not manufacture any type of chemical agents for war, i.e. nerve gas, etc. We do not own rifle factories. We do not have fighter jets or or we do not have any alliance with any military anywhere on the earth. The Most High stripped, of, stripped us of all of our might, stripped us of any allegiance to anyone, because our allegiance is supposed to be only to him. So, when we read and understand the prophecy that the Most High has laid out plain for the children of Israel on what will befall them and what our circumstances would be, he never said that we would have fighter jets and warships and a military. And that we would have the might, the ability to kill other people and pay them off. Doesn't fit. Next, let's deal with the leadership within Israel. That is Israel, the people that's calling themselves Israel sitting on the land. A fellow by the name of Benjamin Netanyahu. He is the current prime minister of Israel. The people that are sitting in the land right now of the Jews. <clears throat> now, Deuteronomy, before we get to this, understand that his whole leadership has been under scrutiny for he has been accused by his fellow Israelis of taking bribes. <clears throat> now, taking a bribe... <clears throat> perverts judgment it is something that should not be done it's against the most highest law but he's on the investigation and has been accused and convicted of taking bribes and the people want him out and he's trying his best to delay the whole process so we're seeing even those in Israel the land <clears throat> that are rising up and the rising up of the people in that land is nothing but the rising up of the Most High. You're seeing it throughout the earth. What you're seeing is people rising up, wanting truth, wanting justice, wanting equity, for having a desire for fairness, and all of these things. When you start seeking any of what I've just mentioned, you're seeking the Most High. So the Most High is putting his spirit upon the inhabitants of the earth where they're seeking after him, though they may not be aware of it. Now, let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 19. And verse 19 of Deuteronomy chapter 16 reads, Thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift. That's a bribe. <clears throat> For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. So, bribery is unacceptable in the sight of the Most High. In fact, it is absolute wickedness. Let's turn to Amos. 5 verse 12. Amos chapter 5. <clears throat> Amos chapter 5 verse 12. And verse 12 reads, For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. <clears throat> they afflict the just. They take a bribe and turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. So men who are accepting bribes are unrighteous men, sinful men, 
wicked men. It is a thing that should not be done. Now, let's turn back to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus 20, 23, verse 8. Exodus chapter 23, and we will read verse 8. <clears throat> verse 8 of Exodus chapter 23 reads, And thou shalt take no gift, no bribe, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverteth the words of the righteous. So when you receive gifts, favors, and you're sitting in an office, especially one who is supposed to deliver judgment and justice, you become corrupt. And the Most High speaks about this, and it is plainly stated in his law that we're not to accept gifts via bribes. Let's turn to 1 Samuel. That way we understand clearly that this man is being accused by his relatives of bribes. And there's no way in the world when the house of Israel was gathered and taken back to the land that would be the prophecy states clearly that we would be cleaning up all the mess in the land and that righteousness would be restored once the house of Israel were gathered out of the many nations, out of the many nations and placed in the land. But somehow they're saying that they are the people of God and they are our people. They're supposed to be the Israelites and they are gathered out of these lands And when they were gathered and placed back into the land, we have one of the head officials, the head of state, accepting bribes. That's not in his law. Now, they have fooled the people of the earth by taking planes and going all around, I'm not going to say the earth, all around Europe and scooping up other Europeans who are Jews. These are European people. Let's not get this confused. Picking them up taking them back into the land and stating that God's people has returned back onto the land. They've gone to all different places trying to trying to make a copy, trying to duplicate what this prophecy states. And they have done it incorrectly. And it's exposed and, and will be exposed as a lie. So, this man is accepting bribes and he's one of the head of state. Now, not to mention his son had came on the scrutiny also doing this investigation for some monies being spent while he was at a strip club. Now, understand, there is a law that there should be no whores of the daughters of Israel. That's our people. Now, when we were gathered out of, all, out of all of these nations, sifted and separated from them, and the Most High returned us back to that holy land that was promised unto our forefathers, nowhere in this prophecy does it state that there will be whorehouses and strip clubs, which is a, which is a modern day whole house. Let's get that real. That that will be in the land. It doesn't state anywhere that when we got back to this land that whomever was in charge leadership wise would be accepting bribes. Now let's keep in mind the prophecy states that for us to be returned back onto that land, we had to return back onto the most high. Let me, rest let me restate that. Let me say that again. We are in these lands because we have transgressed the most high's law. That's why we're here. Now, what you will hear is some of our people who lack understanding have not returned to this law. If you ask them what we are to do, their response is, we, we, we got to wait on God. Most High is waiting on you. The Most High is waiting on you to acknowledge your faults and return back onto Him. And once that's done, then He moves. Deuteronomy chapter 30. So, when we return back onto the Most High, that means we would have turned back onto this law. 
and dropped all manner of wickedness that we have been raised in the midst of the heathen. So those of us who will be returning back onto the Holy Land, we're coming back there understanding the law in its totality. We're coming back in adherence to it. A man that's going to accept the bribe is not coming. A man that's going to be going to a strip club isn't coming. Because we're coming there to tear down the strip clubs. We're coming there to remove the houses of idol worship. And anything that's foul and vile that's sitting in that land. When we get back, it is to be removed. So no way, no how are these people, the people of the Most High, when they have pulled the wool over the world's eyes by picking up random strangers, and that's what they are, random strangers, in airplanes, flying them back into the land, showing it on TV, talking about the Jews have returned home, and all of that. And they've been there for 70 years, can't build one temple, can't build, can't lay a brick on that third temple. You can't. You're not the house of Israel. So you're there. There's corruption. There's homosexuality. There's weaponry of war. All of these things are not going to be when the true house of Israel returns. There will be no bribery in the land. There will be no homosexual parades in the land. There will be no strip clubs for the prime minister's son to go to in the land. None of this is prophesied in this book. These are not the people of the Most High. These are not the sons and daughters of Jacob. Now, let's address some more bribery. 1 Samuel chapter 8. 1 Samuel chapter 8. And we will read verse 3. And verse 3 reads and his sons this is Samuel's sons walked not in his ways Samuel's sons were vile they did not walk in the instruction of the most high but turned aside after lucre and took bribes and perverted judgment so when you take bribes you are corrupt you are unable to render righteous judgment. And so this man is sitting in the land. The people are upset, protesting him because he has been accused of bribes and the attorney general has presented all the necessary evidence that he has done this. All right. So we're dealing with that. So we know good and well, this is not a prophecy and these things were not to happen. All right. We're going to address their government next. But before I address their government, let me address him, Benjamin Netanyahu. One second. Now, this man has flown to the United States and whatever else, whatever places he decides to go to petition governments to back him. Now, the children of Israel, we had strict commandment and direct instruction that we were not to lean on any government when we leaned on Assyria, when we leaned on Egypt or anyone else. We were greatly punished for it. The Most High is our strength. The Most High is our dread. We were not to turn to anyone other than the Most High and the Most High alone, for He is one. He is our strength. He is our shield and buckler. But these Israelis, yeah, the story is a little different with them. So Netanyahu gets on his plane, flies to America, gets in front of Congress, presents all type of erroneous information that's proven to be erroneous, <clears throat> has been doing it for years. And begging America to defend his nation and his stance. The governor of the children of Israel, the seed of David, is not going to be going anywhere begging anyone for anything. Begging for money because every U.S. citizen 
money is taken out of his taxes to give to Israelis. They beg for money. They get a couple of billion dollars every few years. Excuse me. And the children of Israel, the real ones, they're taking it out of our check. So, you know, so he is coming to America begging for money, begging for assistance, and begging other nations to see things his way. And it's really not going good for him. And it's really not going good for them. So what the Most High has to do is he has to strip those that's helping those Israelis. So America and the Christian conservatives and all those little Christian organizations, they're big, that has a lot of money, puts a lot of money into those Jewish coffers, into those Israeli coffers, along with the U.S. government. Most High is going to strip them all. And those Israelis are not going to have no place to turn. It's going to be proven that they're not the house of Israel. And you will see it. And the reason why you're hearing it is because you're going to have to see it. The Most High said to the children of Israel, Ye are my witness, says O Israel. So we've got to see. You're hearing it. But the end result is you're going to see it. And so will they. Now, let's deal with this. Matter of fact, let's go to one more pertaining to these bribes. One more. Micah 7, verse 3. Let's go to Micah 7, verse 3. Let's cover these bribes. So we understand clearly, this man taking these bribes, it's foul. It's a no-no. It's against the Most High's law. And no way, no how, in prophecy, when we return back onto the land, we're going to be there for 70 years. No temple built. No fountain front cleaners established. No sons of Aaron established doing all the Levitical duties. And one of our chief officers would be taking bribes from people. Yeah, it's not in the prophecy. All right. Now, Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7, and we will read verse 3. Micah chapter 7 and verse 3 reads, That they may do evil with both hands earnestly. The prince asketh and the judge asketh for a reward. A bribe. And the great man, he uttereth his mischievous desire, so to wrap it up. So one man may be on trial for something. So he makes a petition to the judge. The judge says, yeah, I can do that, but uh, I'm going to need $2 million in a Ferrari. So they go in the back. They wrap it up. Come up with a deal. Bribe the judge up real good. Now the judge shows a favorable decision towards the the quote unquote accused. It's a bribe. It's foul. Corrupts judgment. It's not to be done. And certainly would not be happening after the children of Israel have been gathered out of these lands and placed back into the lands of our forefathers. So Benjamin Netanyahu and those Jews are not the house of Israel. Now, let's deal with their form of government. Their form of government is called the Knesset. I think that's how you say it, the Knesset. All right, let's deal with this Knesset. First of all, the form of government established by the Most High is his Torah. That's his law. His law, statutes, judgments, and precepts rules all of Israel. But to be specific, the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts rules the entire earth. The Most High is the King of all the earth. And His laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts will be established throughout the entire earth. This form of government, the Knesset, it has a president, it has a prime minister, it has a supreme court. It is a parliamentary system. Another word for that is, this is a European system. You can find this system anywhere that Europeans have ruled and murdered people. They're going to either have a parliamentary system or they have a senate, etc., like the Romans. It's all the same thing. It's all the same people. So, when you're dealing with this Knesset, if you took Benjamin Netanyahu and the members of the Knesset and you put them in the U.S. Congress, 
It's nothing but a bunch of Europeans. You can't tell them apart. Take them and put them in the British Parliament, same thing. In fact, you have the same ideology too because they all are in cahoots against you, O man of Israel. They're all against you, O daughters of Zion. So you see their mischief through their laws throughout the earth. They all have the same form of government. And that government is going to be one of three things. It's going to be Christianity. That ain't a religion. Christianity is a form of government. I want you to be mindful of that. Islam. It's not a religion. It's a form of government. Judaism. It's not a religion. It's a form of government. Like the Most High's Torah. It's not a religion. The house of Israel was never given religion. We were given laws. And these laws are a form of government. And the Most High, once he returns his people to that land, there will be one form of government throughout the earth. And that will be the Torah. And all people will have to go up to the strong one of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because that third temple is going to be there. The Most High is going to be there. And those of us whose heart has been turned back to the Most High, walking in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, we will be there. Because we are the priests of the earth. And the law, the law of the Most High, will go forth from Zion. Now, from the time these Israelis got back into this land with this Zionist movement, have you heard the law come forth from Zion? Have you had any Jewish man run up on you and say, look, we are to obey this law? You have never heard it. And you won't. Because the purpose of the children of Israel and the reason why we were chosen, we were chosen to bring forth the light, the law to the nations. And that's what I'm doing right now. Bringing forth the light to the Most High, of the Most High. His law, statutes, judgments, and precepts to Israel and any other people of other nations that are of a contrite spirit that will take a hold of the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts and do them. And that is the purpose of the children of Israel. No Israeli man has ever told me that I need to return to the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts of the Most High. Never happened. And it's not going to happen because that is not what they were specifically tasked to do. So what we are doing, bringing forth this law to the nations, to the house of Israel first and to the nations, is what our purpose was from the onset. All right, let's get back to this legislative business of the Knesset. Moses, I never said he had no Knesset. He never said when we got back to the land that we were going to not have his law, statute, judgments, and precepts, and we'd be dealing with something called a Knesset, which is a British form of government. It's a parliamentary system of government. It has a legislative, an executive, and a judiciary. The Knesset is the House of Representatives. It's the cabinet. It's a British form of Roman government. That's all it is. That's it. This is not in prophecy. A parliamentary democracy is what they call that. Now, first of all, let's deal with the Most High. The Most High's laws are absolute. There is no democracy. You ain't. I'm not going to say you don't have. You ain't got no choice. <clears throat> is you going to do this law or die? Don't do it. You're going to have punishments. You're going to perish. You're going to have hard times. And you do it bad enough, he's going to kill you. And he's going to remove your seed from the earth. There is no democracy with the most high. You don't have a choice. This is not a multiple choice situation where, well, I get to pick from uh, choice A, B, C, and D. It's not the case. The most high is, this is the law. This is what you have to do. And if you don't do this, I'm going to do this. And there's no ways about it. And you have no choice in the matter. So the fact that they have this Knesset is absolute madness and it's contrary to the most high's law for once again when we when we are gathered out of these lands and return back onto that land there will be no such thing as no Knesset there will be no such thing as no parliamentary system of government 
or no parliamentary democracy. None of that is not in the scrolls. Can't find it. So their system of government clearly knocks them out also. Now let's deal with this freedom thing. Democracy is supposed to provide freedom to those who are doing it. Quote, unquote. Now the freedom that our enemies are seeking, we have to be careful when we start speaking about freedom or freedoms, plural. What the children of Israel, our people, true Israelites, what we're seeking is the ability to do all manner of foul with impunity, like our enemies do. So we want to get mad because one of our people who have done foul, we get a sentence that's 25%, 35%, 50% longer than the next man that did the same crime. We want to be able to get away with the same foulness that he does. <clears throat> Instead of advocating for, we don't want to do this at all. <clears throat> we don't care what sentence is being given. We want to abstain from any wickedness altogether. So we want the freedom to do whatever it is our heart desires. That's the freedom that we want. Now, that is because we have always sought to be like our enemies. Our enemies have no boundaries. A disciplined man must walk within the confine of some form of law or boundary. If not, he becomes uncontrollable so and destructive. So what we're seeing is that our people are seeking to be as European people. They do not walk within confines of law and thus their behavior is destructive. And that is the freedom that we're seeking. The freedom to do whatever we want, whenever we want, with whomever we want, and do this with impunity. No punishment, no strings attached, no responsibility, not being held accountable. That's what we want. And that is a problem because the Most High does not have freedom of religion, freedom of expression, none of that. You have strict law in which you are to abide by. That's it. You can't do what you want. And so we want to be like the heathen because the heathen is doing what they want. Speaking of that, before we continue, we see now that where mask is being uh, implemented, they're trying to make it some form of law to where you have to wear this mask for this COVID-19. The Most High has brought his plagues upon the earth. Wait for what comes next. So the Most High has brought his plagues upon the earth and people have been told to stay at home and do all these other things. You must understand that the European does not adhere to law. That's why he teaches that there is no law. And when there is no law, there is anarchy. Lack of law equals lawlessness. So when you try to take a group of people who have never walked within law, have never stayed within the confines of law, has never had to pay punishments for breaking of law, and then you tell them that they must obey a law, you will have a rebellion on your hands, for they have no idea what law is. The laws that's been made in these European nations are strictly to control the children of Israel, my people, our people. And they have, these laws were never meant to protect any of our people. The laws were meant for us to obey and for them to run amok of. After all, they made these laws. We are in the lands of our enemies. Now, there's an old saying, he who has the gold makes the rules. He who has the gold also breaks the rules. So therefore, you should not be surprised when you see that this man allows all types of escape hatches in his laws. The law states this, but there's always a conjunction in there. But then there's the escape hatch in the back. And that's for him to get out. However, when you find yourself in a predicament and you are one of the sons and daughters of Jacob, 
that escape hatch is closed to you. And that is the duplicity and the hypocrisy of these nations and their laws. It was not designed to help you. It was not designed to protect you. For the laws that were designed to help protect, defend, and guide you, you bought it up, chuck it behind your back, and you wanted to be like other people. Hence, you're running around these nations dumb, blind, and deaf, and absolutely stupid. However, the Most High's light is shining forth, and some of those who are blind are being able to see. Those who could not hear can now hear. And those who have heard things and see things and never understood what they were hearing and couldn't understand what they're seeing, now the Most High has removed the fatness from their heart that they're understanding what they're looking at and what they're hearing. And that is a refreshing thing and it's a beautiful thing for our people. Now, let's go down to the names of these Israelis. Let's go ahead and deal with these Israelis. These are enemies. Let's look at this. All right. These Israelis are from the eastern blocks of Russia. They're coming from Belarus. They're coming from Poland. They're coming from the Ukraine and all these other places that we've never been. <clears throat> they're coming from the Caucasus, from the Caucasus, the steps of the Caucasus Mountain. All right, let's deal with the prophecy. <clears throat> the prophecy states that the children of Israel will be placed in the many lands of our captivity, we would be shipped out to these many nations. And we will have no ease, we'll have no rest. We're on punishment. We will take on the ways and customs of our enemies. Our names were going to be removed. That was important because anyone's name identifies them with a landmass. If a plane went down today, there's a manifest of all of those who are on board. If you hear a Chinese man, you're automatically, you don't have to see him. You hear his name, you know he's Chinese. You hear an Arab's man's name, you know exactly what land master associate him with. You hear an Indian man's name, you know exactly what land master identify him with. You hear a man with a quote-unquote African name, you know exactly what landmaster identify him with. So, your name is very important because your name identifies you with a landmass. A landmass has traditions, has values, has customs. So when I hear your name, I have an idea of what you believe. I have an idea of how you dress. I have an idea of what you eat, your customs, etc. So when the Most High removed our heritage and threw us in these lands, we were made deaf and blind. <clears throat> Everything stripped. So we had no idea who we were in these lands and these other people didn't either. So our names were stripped because our name identifies us with a landmass and we were not to know exactly where we're from and we were not to know exactly who we are. Our names that we carry in these many lands of our captivity are the names of our enemies. Let me say that again. The names of the children of Israel in the many lands of our captivity throughout this diaspora we wear the names of our enemies. Now, this is specific to those of you who are Dominican, that's sitting in the Dominican Republic, that looks like me. Some of you are darker than me. But you clearly are of the children of Israel. And somehow you feel identifying with Europeans is some claim to fame. I want you to understand that that is a no-no. You are the sons and daughters of Jacob sitting there in the Dominican Republic. Your name, your Spanish name, is that of your enemies. Remember, you speak Spanish. You are not Spanish. You just speak Spanish. You need to understand that Spanish is spoken by Spain. Spain is a nation in Europe. The Spanish language is a European language. 
a Spaniard is a European man, a white man for all intentional purposes. So, stop cleaving unto your enemies. It will not serve you well. That's for you to consider. So, the children of Israel, wherever we were scattered, we took on the customs of our people by force. Keep in mind, this religion known as Christianity was spread through the sword, through violence. And we bore the brunt of that violence. Now, <clears throat> if you were conquered by the nations that spoke Spanish, Spain, then you were taken into the Spanish colonies. Your name is Jose Martinez, but you look like me. Juan Gonzalez, and you look like me. If you're taken into the English-speaking nations, then your name is Tom Jones. Bobby Smith. Harold Wilkins and things like that. And if you're in the Dutch colonies, then you have the Dutch names. And if you're in the French colonies, you have the French names. And that includes some of those French nations that's in Africa. And if you're in the Portuguese colonies, you're speaking Portuguese, i.e. Brazil. And a couple of those African nations that's speaking French and Portuguese and Dutch and all this other madness. We're speaking the language of our enemies. We're eating the food that our enemies eat. We're wearing the clothes that our enemies wear. We speak the language of our enemies and we wear the names, the surnames of our enemies. And some of us are so stupid, i.e. those in Dominican Republic and those in America and other places. Lots of us have aligned ourselves with our enemies. Now we must understand this. All we know is what they taught us. Let me say that again. All that we know is what they have taught us. Now, if we look at the way they have conducted themselves throughout the earth, they've caused nothing but destruction, chaos, mistrust, violence, wickedness, evil throughout the earth. So, even if we were to separate ourselves from them, we would have to take on a new way of thinking and a new way of doing things. Because we can clearly attest that what they have done and what they are doing is harmful to the peoples of the earth. And it's certainly against the most high law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. So if we are to withdraw ourselves from them, unless we took on a new way of thinking and a new way of doing things, we will do exactly as they have done. For that is what we know. We are Europeans with a tan. We are Europeans in thinking. And unless we remove ourselves from the ways, their custom, their laws, and all the other foul things that they do, if we do not take on something new, and that, that something new is something of old, that's this law. Because they do not do this law. Won't do it. So if we're going to separate ourselves from them, we have to first do it hear how we think because currently we think just like them and they trained us indoctrinated us to think like them that we may, that we may be a benefit to them and have an adverse effect on ourselves and our own people so the only way we're going to undo that screwing up of the brain is to return to the most highest law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. We know that's right. We know that's righteous. For all that they have done has been shown to us and has been proven to us from times past and present that what they do is unrighteous. All right. So their names. <laughs> Let's deal with this. Get back to the names. Let's deal with this uh, Netanyahu. Let's deal. We're going to start with it. these heads of state that they've got. All right. 
This man calls himself Benjamin Netanyahu. His nickname is quote unquote BB Netanyahu. All right. Now, first of all, the enemies of the children of Israel placed their names upon the children of Israel. That's why I just went through all that name stuff that I just listed. The Europeans got their names on us all over the place. You can't find no European, no Caucasian, no white man that's got an African name and speaks an African dialect because he was forced to do it. Because he was enslaved, beaten, busted over the head and forced to speak an African language and he has an African name on him that was forced upon him. Can't find a white man on the planet like that. Doesn't exist. So, we know clearly the prophecy states that our enemies would place their name upon us. When you put your name on a man, like anything that's got your name, your car got your name on it, your house and everything else, means you own it. So, we have been owned by these people. These people are so foul, they used to gift our children to their children. This is your slave. This is your pet. This is your plaything. That's the stature that we were reduced to in the midst of the heathen. So let's deal with Netanyahu. Now his father's name is Nathan. Nathan. Mikulowski or Mikulowski, something like that. It's a Russian. All right. So this Nathan guy, his real name is Mikulowski. Maybe pronouncing that wrong, but it's Russian. And I'm not Russian. So you can understand the mispronunciation happening here. Now, this Nathan has some children. So let's deal with this. This man is from Warsaw, Poland. Eastern Bloc of Europe. So you're going to find these people. There's, these people are practicing Zionists. And they all immigrated from Belarus, Ukraine, Poland, Hungary, and all these other places. All these other Eastern Bloc European nations. Germany, France, England, and wherever else, they all immigrated to what we call Israel, the land mass. And when they got there, they changed their names from Mikulowski to Netanyahu. Man's name is not Netanyahu. The man's name is Mikulowski. This man is a Russian, straight out of Warsaw, Poland. That's what you got. So nowhere in the prophecy does it state that we will be coming into the land. Now, if we got there, we're supposed to change our names to take on our inheritance, dropping the name of the heathen who put it upon us. No one put the name of Mikulowski on Nathan Netanyahu. No one put it on there. Ain't no record where this man been enslaved and the people who own him, their name was Mikulowski and they put that name on him. That's this man's name. That's this man's heritage. And you can trace that back. So now they're trying to, they're trying to fulfill the prophecy. So they went into this book. They read it saying, you know what? The children of Israel, want, they're supposed to take on their inheritance. Oh, I know I will do this. We're going to gather all these people out of these many lands. We're going to make a big scene, get them on planes, fly them into the land, and state that the children of Israel, God has returned them back onto the land. And oh, the children of Israel are supposed to take on their inheritance. They're supposed to surname themselves Israel. So what we're going to do is when we get back to the land, we're going to go ahead and switch our names up from Mikulowski to Netanyahu. And I guess we're supposed to buy that. So his family changed their names in the 1920s. Keep in mind, nobody ever enslaved these people. They were not scattered any place. Wherever they went, they went via immigration. Not a forced migration. No slavery. 
No one stripped them of their names. This Mikulowski is his name. No one stripped them of it and no one forced this name on him. No one stripped him of his heritage. I guarantee you what they eat is the same thing you'll find them eating in Poland today. That's what they eat. So that's who these people are. Wolves in sheep's clothing. Now, understand that it was a common practice for Zionist immigrants. Zionist, Jews, call them what you want. To adopt Hebrew names. So they come to the land and they take that Mikulowski and all the other Russian surnames that they've got. And they switch it up. Because they're trying now to be in false pretense, pretending to be the people of the Most High, and it's not working. So this man and his family are Polish. They're from Warsaw, Poland. Now let's jump and deal with David Ben-Gurion. He is the first prime minister of Israel. So when Israel became a quote-unquote nation and America jumped up there on the first day and said, hey, we recognize you. David Ben-Gurion, I want to say the airport right now that's in Israel, the main airport is known as the David Ben-Gurion Airport. You see this and you think, oh man, this is an Israeli. Yeah, he is an Israeli and he is a Jew. What he ain't is an Israelite. All right, let's look at this man, this David Ben-Gurion. Yeah, let's take a look at him. His place of birth? Guess. Poland. His real name is Grun. That's a G-R-U-N. Above that, that U, there's two dots. Known as a U. So it's Grun. That's German in origin. So, this man is coming from Germany. That's what his surname indicates. And he's a president. And then his parents moved to America and they're moving all over the place, shifting and changing their names, hoping no one kind of would spot them, hoping no one would recognize exactly who they are as they do their best to impersonate what you would call the holy people, which would be the children of Israel. So his real name, David Ben-Gurion, his name is, last name, surname is Grun. This is German in origin. No one put this name on him. This is this man's name. I want you to understand that. All right? My last name is Dutch. It's long. If you looked at it, it would frighten you. Not my name, not my family names. The name was placed upon me and my family. Didn't have that all the time. You understand? And so is the case of all the children of Israel throughout the diaspora. We wear other people's names. And this man, David Grun, who calls himself Ben-Gurion when he was alive, no one ever placed this Grun name on him. This is his name. This is his family. This is his heritage. These are Europeans. All right. Let's deal with the first president because I don't want to go into this too much further. It gets comical. The first president of Israel, his name is Cham Wiseman. C-H-A-I-M, Cham Wiseman, a Wiseman, a Wiesman, if he's going to speak German. That W would be a V, Wiesman. Guess where he's born? He's born in Belarus. Born in Belarus, once again. These Russians. His nationality, it states that he's Israeli British. Okay, this is a white guy. A European. An Israeli British. What is that? Is that a nationality? Yeah, no such thing. <laughs> so, what you have is Europeans hiding in the midst of Europeans. Switching back and forth, bouncing around, switching their names around, trying to fool some people. And they're being assisted by other Europeans by which to do this madness. All right. Yitzhak Rabin. 
Let's deal with him. We'll make him the last one. Yitzhak Rabin. R-A-B-I-N. That's the last name, his surname. Now, what is this dude's real name? All right. His surname is Rubitzov. R-U-B-I-T-Z-O-V. Rubitzov. Now, that's Russian all day long. And I don't speak Russian, so if I pronounce this thing a little off, certainly you can understand. Rubitsov is this man's name. That's his real name. His father was Nehemiah Rubitsov. He was born in the Ukraine. Wow, surprise. His father, Nehemiah, immigrated to the United States and changed his name to Rabin. He's trying to hide. So, they're moving back and forth, moving in between lands, switching their names, and hoping that no one's going to find out. But the Most High is going to shed light on all of this. All right. So that deals with just a few of their prominent quote-unquote leaders that's been in their Knesset, etc. None of the prophecy states what I've just read. None of it. Coming from Belarus, they're talking about they picked up Jews from all over the earth. No, you didn't. You picked all of all them Europeans up out of out of Europe, Eastern, Western Europe, and you took them and placed them in that land. And that's just the facts. Now, before we get to let me let me get to the names. Let me go ahead and read that. Let me read that. Isaiah 65, verse 15. Let's go there. Then we're gonna come back and deal with these Ethiopians. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65, and we will read verse 15. All right. Isaiah chapter 50, 65, excuse me. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 15 reads, speaking to the names. I done told you that we wear these people's names because our enemies would put their names upon the chosen of the Most High. Which means every Israelite that's been scattered throughout the diaspora does not have his own name. The name of his enemies are upon him. Let's verify that via these scrolls. Verse 15 of Isaiah chapter 65 reads, And ye shall leave your name for a curse upon my chosen. That's why we got these names of these people. For Yah shall slay these, going to kill them, and call his servants by another name. So we're being called Israelites now. Uh, and because we are the seed of Jacob, they're calling us all manner of foul, detestable names, no matter where on the earth we go. Most High is going to kill our enemies. And he's going to call us by another name. These people that call themselves Jews, they've always been called Jews. And they're still being called Jews today. Most High said that the wicked, his enemies, were going to put his name, were going to put their name upon his chosen. I need any Israeli listening to this. Can you please show me where anyone has ever placed their name upon you? Let's go back and look at the few people that we just named about. Benjamin Mikulowski. That's his name. No one placed this name on him. You can't find where some Mikulowskis own Benjamin's family and forced them into slavery and put that name on them. You can't find that. Let's look at David Ben-Gurion. His last name Ben-Gurion is Grun. You can't find where Grun owned David's family. Beat them down, raped them and killed them, and forced the last name of Grun on, on, on David's family. You can't find that. The first president, Cham Wiesman, born in Belarus. You can't find where nobody changed his name, forced him to have that name. 
done happened. Yitzhak Rabin, surname Rubit Rubit Zoff. No one beat Yitzhak family, beat him in the head, raped him, murdered him, sent him throughout the earth, and forced this name on him. Don't fit the prophecy. So we read clearly where the Most High, those who have placed their names upon us, you Brits, you Russians, you Germans, you Italians, Romans, you have the French, you have the Dutch, Germans, the Portuguese, the English, that's the Americans, the Canadians, and the rest of them, the Australians, all of them, same people. So all of you that have the children of Israel in your land, that you have beaten down, raped, murdered, and killed, and have done all manner of wickedness unto them that's contrary to the Most High's law, Most High said he's going to kill you. So what all of you have to contemplate is are you willing to die? <clears throat> or will you hear these words and turn to the Most High with your whole heart and your whole soul. That's the message for any European listening to this. Who knows what his family has done to our people. And I know you might think, well, you know, I've never had any slaves, etc., etc., etc. Yeah, yeah, you have. You have had some slaves. And you have done all these things to my people. Because... Your father and your grandfather and your great, great, great grandfather a thousand generations ago, it's you. <clears throat> you are him. You are his genes. You are his lineage. So you're here and you're going to have to pay <clears throat> just so you understand that and there's no way around it. So we understand clearly that the Most High state that the enemies will place his name, will place their names upon his chosen. No one's ever placed their names upon some Israelis. Never happened. So they don't fit the prophecy. Once again, knocks them out of the box. I'm speaking in plain English. That way anyone can understand this. Let's move down to the language. Language, like I've said, language is important. Let me take a sip. Language is important because your language speaks to your heritage. It speaks to the landmass in which you live. And if it doesn't speak to the landmass as a collective, the language you speak may have a specific dialect. And that dialect identifies what region of a whole nation that you're from. So your language is very important. So when you take away a man's language, you're stripping them of a whole lot of information. All right. So let's deal with the language. Those that are sitting in the land of Israel, that's calling themselves Jews, calling themselves Israelis. Yeah, they may be Israelis. What they're not, they're not Israelites. So let's, what do they speak? The language they speak there is what's called Yiddish. This language is pretty much is, is Central, Eastern, and Western Europe is where you'll find this language. Excuse me. Ethnicity, Ashkenazi Jew. Now, Ashkenaz is the son of Goma. If any of you don't know, you can read Genesis chapter 10, verse 3, who would be Japhetic people if we're dealing with Ashkenaz in that sense. The language family of Yiddish, what do you know? Germanic languages, Germanic languages, Indo-European languages. Now, if you research Hebrew, Hebrew is actually an African tongue, quote-unquote African tongue. The Hebrew language is a language of black people. That's just putting it in common sense terms. We just leave it there. You can research that all you want. Hebrew has never been a European language, so you understand that. So, when we're dealing with the language family, this Yiddish that they speak, it's Germanic 
in its structure. It's of the Germanic languages. It has a lot of bits and pieces of all these different languages from Eastern Europe and all the European countries. It's a mongrel language. It is corrupt. It is mixed. It is unpure. And it's made up of existing languages of the heathen. That's what they speak. And they still speak it today. They have been in the land 70 years and they still speak that. Now, they have you believe when they got on all these planes and got these people out of all these different nations in Europe and flew them to Jerusalem talking about the Jews are home and God's people have returned and white people are going crazy and getting excited. Meanwhile, the real children of Israel are looking at that, not even understanding what's going on. We are not excited. We're not, we're not doing anything. We're just trying to figure out what's really going on. That's all. Meanwhile, other Europeans are just excited and going crazy. God's people have returned. Psych. <clears throat> Let's deal with Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9. Zephaniah chapter 3. And verse 9. Because now we have to establish if all that we're seeing is real. All right, Zephaniah. <clears throat> and we will read chapter 3 because all of this stuff has to be established. That way we have to understand clearly what we're looking at. All right. <clears throat> Zephaniah chapter 3, and we'll read verse 9. And Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 9 reads, For then will I turn to the people a pure language, that they may all call upon the name of Yah to serve him with one consent. Now, in essence, what this is saying is, the Most High is one. The Most High has always been one because he changes not. However, what it's stating is that the Most High's people will not know to call on him with one name or one consent for the simple fact that we're scattered in so many nations. We speak many different languages. We speak many different tongues. We don't have what we call a common language in the midst of us. And we all refer to God by some other name. We're not in agreement. And we will not see eye to eye until the Most High brings again Zion. And when he does this, he will turn to us a pure language. So if the Israeli that's sitting in this land right now, if he, quote unquote, if he is the people of God and he is the sons of Jacob, how come he has been returned onto the land been sitting there for 70 years, homosexuals in the land, strip clubs in the land, no peace in the land, land don't get enough water, you need desalination plants in the land, the land is barren, you have to try to do all kind of scientific miracles to get some stuff to grow, you just got a bunch of problems there. So none of this was prophesied, pertain, pro prophesied pertaining to this land. Now, as far as calling on the Most High with one name and one consent, you all speak Yiddish. So you all speak the same language. We don't. We have different customs in the different lands where we are. You meet a Jew in America and a Jew in Romania, they speak the same language eats the same food, do the same whatever religion and that they follow Judaism, they follow after the same thing. You meet an Israelite in America and an Israelite in Haiti and an Israelite in Dominican Republic and an Israelite in Argentina, you talk in different languages, you talk in different customs, you talk in different belief systems. You can sit them in a room, they all look alike until you tell them to speak. And all of a sudden, this one speaks French. 
This one speaks English. This one speaks a manner of English that people can't understand. This one speaks Spanish. This one speaks Portuguese. That's for what they, this one speaks French. And that's what you have with the children of Israel. We're not on one accord with language. We are speaking languages of our enemies and walking after the customs of our enemies. Now, here's the question. The language of Yiddish. Who forced that upon the Israelis? Let me say that again. This language that they speak called Yiddish, who forced that upon them? Absolutely nobody. Absolutely nobody. No one beat them into understanding and speaking Yiddish. No one did. It's a language of their own choosing. They're not the people of the Most High. So the children of Israel, when we return to the land, the Most High is going to make a pure language. We're going to be speaking Hebrew of the ancient text. These people have been in the land, and they're still speaking a mongrel, corrupt language called Yiddish. It's not Hebrew. It is a mixed language, a mongrel language of all those European nations from which they came. So you understand that. So we will have a pure language. They've been in that land for 70 years. They don't have a pure language. They still have that mongrel language that they speak. It's not them. All right. The return to Israel. The return to Israel. I'll read a few more, then we'll stop this at an hour and a half, and then we'll pick up at a part four, because I've got a whole lot more material here that we've got to cover. We may do this series, may last ten series, but just so our people understand exactly who and what we're dealing with. The return to Israel. Now, it reads clearly when we go to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. Let's go there. Deuteronomy chapter 23. That way we can verify all that we're seeing with actually by actually going through these scrolls. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. And verse 17 of Deuteronomy chapter 23 reads, There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite, of the sons of Israel. So whores are not to be in the midst of our people, neither are there to be homosexuals in the midst of our people. That's male or female. It's disgusting both ways. So, if this is the prophecy, and this is the law, and we have to return back onto this law and all the other laws before we can even be, be gathered out of these nations and returned back to this land, then how come Benjamin Netanyahu's son is going to strip clubs? There's nothing but whores in strip clubs. How come in Tel Aviv you have one of the biggest gay parades on the earth celebrated there? They've been in the land for 70 years. And the only way that we are going to be allowed to return back onto that land and gathered out of these nations we have to adhere to all of these laws before we are returned back there. So you have a bunch of people sitting in this land that pulled the facade before the inhabitants of the earth that they're God's people. Got some people that look like them, some dumb Europeans to scoop them up and take them back and present this whole lie to the whole earth. And then when we come into this scripture and we come to the scrolls and we read it, and we understand clearly what the criteria is in order for the house of Israel to be gathered out of these nations and return back onto the land that was promised unto our forefathers. When we take a look at what we're seeing in the land and a closer look at what the Most High and His prophet states, we understand clearly that these people are not the children of Israel. Now, let's move to Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 9. Moving over one chapter, let's go to verse 9. And verse 9 reads, of Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 9 reads, Remember what Yah, thy strength, did unto Miriam by the way, 
after that ye, ye were come forth out of Egypt. Well, when we came out of Egypt, what the Most High did to Miriam, he made her white. He made her leprous. Aaron was horrified by this whole thing to see his sister being white, being turned leprous. So what we're looking at is a bunch of leprous people in the land. And we were instructed clearly to remember what the Most High did to Miriam. Why? Because as we are brought to this book of remembrance and we start linking up our heritage, identifying our seed in taking possession or taking grabbing a hold of our names, our ancestry of the Most High, his laws, statutes, judgments, precepts, and his customs that we were supposed to be walking in, then we have to start, when they start telling us that these are the people of God in the land, we don't know if they are because our names, our heritage, everything, our knowledge, wisdom, understanding was removed. The Most High stripped us. So we have nothing by which to make a comparison that we may know what is true or what is false. Hence, this book of remembrance. This is a time capsule. This was written for a time to come. That time to come is now. Like I've said before, sometimes the things you hear and see and some of the things, sometimes the things that you are taught is not for right then. Sometimes it's for a time to come. So all that was laid out by our prophets was for then as it is for now, which was the time to come, which is now. And these laws remain the same and there are no, no new prophets and there will be no new prophets. For when we had prophets, we sought to kill them and we would not hearken unto the words of the Most High that came through the prophets. The Most High's word has not and does not change. It's right here for us to read. There's no need for new prophets because you have the same old information. That old information is the information that you will have. It is unchangeable. It is the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Nothing is to be added and nothing is to be taken away. So if you add something, then it will be new. If you don't add nothing and you don't take away nothing, it remains the same. This is very, very simple logic. All right. Let's deal with let's deal with the Ethiopians before we wrap this up. I'm going to wrap, try to wrap this up in one hour and 30 minutes before we will continue with a part four. The Ethiopians. All right. Now, in Ezekiel, Ezekiel states clearly that the house of Israel will be brought together as one stick. Remember, we will split. Solomon lost his mind, started dealing with strange women. We're not to do this. You're to, mar to marry a daughter Zion. He started marrying strange wives. Strange people have strange behavior. So these strange wives had strange gods idols that they worshipped. Solomon started going after the gods of his wives, the idols of his wives. And he was warned specifically not to do this. And he did. And the kingdom was torn from him. And so now you have the kingdom split in two. Israel, instead of being one nation, is now two. You have the south, Judah, Jerusalem. You have the north, which is referred to as Samaria. It's referred to as Israel. It's also referred to as Ephraim, those three. And that's on, that's one of the rare instances where a vast majority of Israel is actually described on the one, absolutely one tribe. And that would be Ephraim because that was the head tribe in the north. So that split brings about or is brought about by Solomon walking after strange women. So you have this separation in the midst of the house of Israel to where now 
we're dealing with a north and a south. That becomes important when it comes to dealing with these quote-unquote Israelis who claim to be, if you ask Ben Gurion, he's not here, if you go ask, go and ask Benjamin Netanyahu, hey there, baby, what tribe are you from? And then ask him to show you the lineage of his tribe. He doesn't know. He couldn't tell you. Now, the prophecy states that when we return back onto the land, all of these things will be laid out plain for us. We would know exactly who we are, what tribe we belong to. If you ask him, he couldn't tell you. And that's because he's not of the house of Israel. Now, covering back to these uh, the Egyptians and the Somali, people from Somalia and the Ethiopians that came to Israel. Here's this big con. So they fooled the people of the earth talking about they were picking up Jews and bringing God's people back to the land. Sent airplanes to get them, flew them in, folks wearing, it's, oh, no, wearing they're flowing uh, Israeli flags with the star David. David never had a star. Star Molech is what that is. But David never have had a star. You can't go in these scrolls and find no such thing. So they're there waving his flag. You got Koreans in there. You got white people in there, which is basically a Jew is nothing but a European. And then you have, uh, they went and got some Africans. All right, let's address that part. Now, Ezekiel states clearly that we were just discussing the split. Israel having a north and a south being split into two nations. And, and Ezekiel stated plainly that those two houses will be brought back under one umbrella. It will be one stick in his hand. The Most High is going to bring those two houses together. One law, one language, calling upon him with one consent, one temple that we will have to go to. We will be one. We will no longer be a splintered nation. This is what is supposed to happen when the Most High gather all of his people out of these nations because they have returned unto his law. And since they return unto his law, then he returns, sift them out, separate them from the people of the nations, and bring them back into the land that he promised unto our forefathers. And when all of this happens, we will all be on one accord, brought together, one stick in the Most High's hand. So says Ezekiel, priest and prophet. That's the prophecy. However, what we have got in this land of uh, Israel, after these Israelis have been gathered out of all of Europe, because that's where they're from, taken out of Europe and put in this land, and then I guess they figure, well, we'll dress this up a little bit. we go grab some Africans too. So some Africans are claiming, hey, we Jews too. So they're thinking, oh, man, we got to go get these black people. You know that's what they're thinking. So they go get them. In utter disgust, <clears throat> they got them, brought them in the land, mad as all get out. So they said, this is what we're going to do. This is what they did. This is a fact. This is not made up. This is not conjecture. This is not guesswork. This is none of that. The women of Ethiopia and those that came from Eritrea and all the other places in Africa that claim to be Jews, that these Israelis sent planes to go get them, brought them back to the land, put them in places where the land will not, where the land is no good, denied them jobs, sterilized those people, sterilized the women, put hardship upon the men and the women and the children, denied them all the basic necessities or access to necessities, same what you would call racist policies of America, the same racist policies of Great Britain, Germany, and all the other European nations on the face of this earth as it pertains to our people. They took and put all those same vile, unrighteous, wicked practices 
into action when they those Israelis brought those African Jews into that land. Now, racism as we know it, you can't find no one in this book being charged with racism. It doesn't exist. What they are guilty of is hate and jealousy of our people. An old hatred, an old jealousy. Thus, their dealings with us have been unrighteous, has been wicked, has been unjust. So therefore, we can never turn to these people for justice. They know not what it is. We cannot turn to them for righteousness, for they know not what it is. And just as they have taught us all manner of wickedness while we're in the midst of them, that is why we must separate ourselves from them, return back onto the Most High, that we may do what we were born to do, that which we were ordained by the Most High to do. And that is to bring forth His truth, bring forth His light, bring forth His righteousness to these foul Gentiles. So they have taught us all manner of wickedness because we chose and walked after wickedness. But as we return back onto the Most High's Law, Statutes, Judgments, and Precepts, then we will do what we were designed to do. And that is to bring forth our righteousness or bring forth the Most High's righteousness to these nations. So y'all taught us wickedness. We're going to have to teach you righteousness. You can't teach us righteousness. You had centuries to do it and don't know what it is. So the Israeli took the Africans, the Ethiopian Jews, and, and the Egyptians or whomever, the black ones, brought them into the land with despiteful minds, denied them all the basic necessities, called them all kind of foul names, and they sterilized those women. They sterilized the, the same tactic that they ran over there is the same tactic that they're doing here as it pertains to our people. You already know these police departments go to Israel to train. The same tactics they use on those Palestinians are the same tactics they use over here. They're killing Palestinians over there regularly killing Israelites over here regularly. We're the same people, us and these Palestinians. Many of these Palestinians are of the house of Ephraim, but they have mingled themselves with the people, the Arabs. So you can see the quote-unquote African or the black genes in them. They're mixed of taking hold of a different type of religion over there, not calling on the Most High, getting their heads beat in every day. Praying five times a day is not working for them. We're over here taking a hold of the idols of this nation. Getting beat over the head, killed, shot, and everything else. Going to church more than everyone else. Got more church than anyone else, and we haven't figured it out either. They are utilizing, our enemies are utilizing the same tactics. Same tactics used in the land of Israel right now are the same tactics that's used on our people right here in America and anywhere else where we dwell. For these people have dominion over the nations of the earth. That includes the Vatican too. All the ways and means of the government of Christianity, it's imposed upon our people throughout the earth. When you look at the earth's map, the nations are either Islamic, Christian, Judah, Judaism, Hinduism. Those are about your four main ones right there. And these, make no mistake, are forms of government. So, the people being in the land that's calling themselves Israelis, the prophecy states that the house of Israel will be made one stick once we return back into that land. So can any Israeli, can any Jew 
explain to me where in prophecy did it state that one tribe was actually going to sterilize another. The prophecy states that once we return back into the land, that he would bless us more than he blessed our forefathers, that he would multiply us more than he multiplied our forefathers. None of the Most High's prophets in none of these scrolls stated that when we got back, that one tribe was going to sterilize another tribe. They is not here. So, no matter what these Israelis do, they can only fool the foolish. That's it. But those of us who have this light before us, this law, this lamp, We'll see through everything you're trying to do. The Most High will not allow you to do what you're doing. And it go unchecked. And you will pay for what you have done. And you will pay for what you're doing. That goes to the Israelis. And that goes for all the European nations. That has been the Arab. Let me not forget the Arab. And the Asian. Because they're all in cahoots against our people. And they all have conspired against our people. So don't you believe for one second that a Russian and a Israeli are enemies. They both speak Russian. They go in the back, they don't need a translator. They can eat the same thing and speak the same language. So understand that these many, the Arabs and the Europeans and the rest of them, regardless of what faction of European they are, they're all in cahoots against our people. So says Psalm 83. And if you look at the treaties of the earth, how the earth has been divvied up and the actions of the Europeans and the Arabs and the, and the Asians, you will see clearly that this book, this book of remembrance, when you read it and you look up at what you're seeing today and you look at what has transpired in years past, this thing lines up perfectly, perfectly. And if you have any sense after you have read it and you analyze everything and you understand what's going on, there is absolutely no choice but to turn to the Most High with your whole heart and your whole soul. There is no choice because it becomes plain for all to see that's actually in this book. So we're going to stop here. We're going to stop at this point. It's been one hour and 42 minutes. So we understand that we were supposed to be brought one stick in the hand of the Most High with the tribes we're supposed to unite. The law is supposed to be in place. We're supposed to find out who, what tribe we belong to. The Levites are supposed to be put back in their place. All the nations are supposed to go up to Jerusalem because the temple would be there and they were supposed to learn the law. No one has ever gone up to learn anything from these Jews. No one. Ain't no nation gone up there and say, hey, teach us the law. It's never happened. Never. And it won't happen. Not with them in the land because they're not our people. All right, let me mark where we're stopping at. All right, let me mark the spot where we're stopping at. That way I know where to continue from. All right, so hope that gives you a better understanding of who these people are. We're not done. We've got more. Okay, so we will pick up with a part four. It's probably going to be 10 parts because there's a lot of information to cover. So look at what's going on in the land. Look at what's going on throughout the lands of the earth. And come into this book of remembrance and you read it. And remember, the most high stated we are his witnesses. So a witness sees. So what you're reading, you have to be able to bear witness to it. And that is the most high letting you know he's validating. Yeah. Didn't I tell you that? Yeah. Look over here. Look over there. So you can actually take this book of remembrance and you can validate it with what you see. You can validate it with what your parents have seen and what your grandparents have seen. And if to validate that, to show you that the same thing is going to be whatever generation that he brought us to remembrance in, we're going to be able to verify all of it. Meaning if you can't see it with your eyes, which you should be able to and you will, you can pull up records from 200 years ago. 500 years ago and validate the words of this what they call the Old Testament validate the word of this book of remembrance so the Most High's word can be cross-checked and can be validated through historical 
documents of these nations. These individuals that have lied to us and done all these foul things to us, we don't have to go digging any, for anything. Those who have lied to us are going to be the very people that's going to, to going to tell us the truth. Those who have cussed us out, spit on us, called us all manner of, of names, done all manner of foul things to our children, etc., etc., they're going to have to turn to us to be saved. Because we are the son. Exodus 4, verse 22. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High. And they will all have to take a hold of a man of Israel and say, I'm with you. Teach me the ways and the law, statute, judgment, precepts of the Most High. That's how they're going to be saved. There's no other way. Anyway, Israel. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. That concludes the third part. List them mine enemies, the enemies without. We've got to deal with the enemies within these foul Israelites that's among us. We've got to deal with them. And then when we look on the outside, we've got enemies aplenty in all of these many nations. None of them mean us any good. However, there will be remnants of these nations that's been our enemies. There will be a fraction of them that will turn to the Most High with their whole heart and their whole soul. However, they don't know anything about the Most High or His laws. And it's our duty to teach them. So, man of, man of Israel, get on your job. Take your place. Take a hold of your heritage. Take a hold of your custom. Take a hold of the Most High's law. Drop the ways of our enemies. It will serve us no good. And if that isn't plain to you right now, I don't know what will. So we will continue next week with a part four to this, and there will be more. Meanwhile, keep reading every day in the Book of Remembrance. Try to look at the news media and sift through what they're saying and see how what you're saying is lining up with the words of the prophets. That way you will make sense of everything that's going on around you. And if you're walking in the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, and you have that light before your eyes like frontlets, he will certainly allow you to see and make sense, understanding what it is you're seeing, what it is you're hearing, and that way you know exactly which way to go, what decisions to make, and the things to take into consideration as you see and hear these things. Once again, thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Stay in that law, Israel. Peace, and y'all bless.